We're here in Monte Carlo for the Rendezvous de Septembre. For AM Best TV, I'm Richard Banks. And I'm joined now by Rob Newbold, President Verisk Extreme Event Solutions. Rob, great to see you. Good morning, Richard. Thanks for having Welcome. me. Welcome. So it's been another busy cat year. What should we be thinking of when we're thinking about a, a normal cat year? Yeah, great question. So every year since 2012, Verisk has produced a report on global modeled losses, really to answer just that question, provide some context to the level of loss the industry is facing. In 2021, that global model loss from our suite of exposure data and models was over $100 billion for the first time. So you hear a lot of commentary about is $100 billion the new normal? Well, we've been saying that for a few years, and actually the current report puts the global modeled average loss at $151 billion. With, if you look at the distribution, the 1% exceedance probability is $400 billion. So yes, $100 billion is a large number, but from our perspective, the industry should be prepared for uh, losses of much greater magnitude. What's interesting about that $151 billion, if I can take just a minute to break it down, if you don't mind, uh, $119 billion of that $151 is pure property cat loss. The remainder is crop and agricultural losses. What's interesting and perhaps relevant for our audience today, and particularly this Monte Carlo, is roughly 50% of that $119 billion in property loss is severe convective storm, winter storm, wildfire, and flood. We, like many people, object to the moniker of secondary perils. When you're generating that level of loss, they are by no means secondary. But frequency perils, as we call them, are certainly of note in an area of investment for Verisk. So, typically in Monte Carlo, a lot of talk about inflation, particularly the past, the past couple of years. How does that uh, influence catastrophe modeling? So, Exposure values are a direct input to the models that generate that, that global model average annual loss number. It's imperative that carriers and reinsurers and brokers are working together to get the most updated view of risk, the most updated property locations, and to your point, exposure values into the model on an annual basis. For the last three years, on average, exposure growth has been about 7%, mixed between both pure increase in construction and, and inflationary property values. Inflation has slowed a bit in recent years to about 4% on average, I would say. But still, that has a potential to have a notable impact on your loss. And again, we would just say it's really important to make sure you're capturing both where those locations are as construction continues to happen in high hazard areas, people like their ocean views, um, and make sure the values are up to date as well. So I guess moving on from that, not being a single theme at this year's Monte Carlo, but climate change is always on the agenda here. How do you adapt your models to take into account climate change? Yeah, great question, Richard. It's important, I think, to distinguish between climate change and climate variability. The climate is very much changing. We don't want to come across as climate change deniers. It is real. Things are getting more warm. Things are getting more wet. That's having a direct impact really on all global atmospheric perils. The models we're constructing and giving to the market, we believe are fit for what we call a near present view of climate, which means effectively you should be able to take this model and manage your risk on a five to 10 year time horizon. We're also investing in longer term views of climate, uh, 2050, 2070, 2100, to allow our clients in the market to understand, well, what, what could the risk look like over these longer term time horizons? It's a balance of us making sure we're taking the latest available science and data to give that current and somewhat forward-looking view of risk across all perils. So we're here talking towards the end of, of the Monte Carlo rendezvous. What messages are you going to be taking home to your colleagues? Yeah, so we've talked about the importance of modeling a global view of risk. We talked about the frequency-driven perils. I just want to make sure we don't turn our attention away from the severity perils. There happens to be Hurricane Francine in the water today, uh, making landfall later this evening in the U.S. It does look like a bit of a smaller storm, but when you get into these larger levels of tail risk, you really do need a, a large hurricane or a large earthquake, and that risk is still very much prevalent. So that's maybe a focus on NatCat risk. We also have solutions available to the market, and a lot of talk has been around casualty risk and SRCC, strikes, riots, and civil commotions risk. For casualty, Verisk has been offering solutions really since 2019 to look at, again, longer-term casualty risk analytics, and excited to partner with our colleagues in insurance, reinsurance, and broking to explain how those solutions work and perhaps um, bring some of that protection gap together. And then lastly, on SRCC, we have a business unit called Veris Maplecroft that has a suite of global risk indices that based on the last several years of actual SRCC activity, they can take those indices and compare them to loss activity and actually identify which ones are predictive of future SRCC risk. So things like, it wouldn't surprise you, things like prevalence to gather, police brutality, economic uncertainty, turn out they are predictive for SRCC. 
and we're building a probabilistic forward-looking SRCC model for the United States that will launch later this year. So a lot of things outside just even that core property NatCat to talk about. Robert, it's great to see you. Great Thanks to very see much you. indeed for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Richard. For Invest TV, I'm Richard Banks.